Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are again in the PMDG 777 video. I had done a poll again and everyone seems to be uh, only watching 777 these days. So here it is. We are at KSFO by Flight Beam. Uh, amazing airport and we are in the American Airlines 777. I really like this livery. It has this nice uh, rugged look compared to the shiny United livery. Um, good change from uh, flying the shiny 777. Uh, we are in the cold and dark state right now and we have the ground power unit and air conditioning unit connected. Um, so yeah, let's get into the cockpit and let's fly a short flight to LAX. Uh, we do have IFR weather in LAX and it's kind of cloudy and foggy here in SFO as well. So it's going to be a nice, nice cloudy flight. All right, let's get into the cockpit. We are in a cold and dark state. So uh, let's make sure we have everything sorted out here. So sim brief flight plan, I'm gonna generate and file the flight plan right now. Okay, so that is complete. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is use my tablet to request data from sim brief so that everything is sorted out there. I really like how the route just shows up slowly. So the flight plan is loaded. Let's quickly look at the departure weather. So not a lot of winds. We have a few clouds at 600 feet, scattered at uh, 20,000, and then altimeter is 2987. Yeah, um, 17 degrees, nice and cold morning out here in SFO. So let's get prepping. Go to the overhead panel. First thing we are gonna do is turn the battery on. We will switch to primary and secondary external power here. Uh, once that is done and the aircraft is getting powered up, let's start uh, doing our overhead panel flows. We'll first, uh, we'll first uh, switch the added on so that the aircraft starts identifying where it's at. IFE, in-flight entertainment system for passengers and utilities, both of them can turn on. All of this look good. Bus ties are on auto. Um, left and right generators are on and the drive switches are locked and guarded. Emergency lights go to armed, uh, voice recorder goes to on, passenger oxygen is nice and guarded. We can turn on the window heat now Can turn on the C1 and C2 electric hydraulic pumps, primary hydraulic pumps and all of these can go to auto. We can also turn the seat belt signs and no electric signs to auto. Uh, we don't need a lot of light right now, so we are good there. This is basically the cockpit lighting section. Cargo fire, all of this looks good. Let's do a quick fire test. Good. Discharge switch is guarded. EEC mode, both of them are normal and guarded. Engine start switches are also both on normal and guarded. That looks great. Fuel jettison looks normal, the switch is pushed in, um, arm switch is off and the nozzle switches are guarded. We can leave the, um, leave the fuel pump switches to off right now. Anti-ice, we will not need that today, so we leave that on auto. Our nav lights are on, beacon lights will turn on later. We don't need the strobe, taxi and runway turn off lights just yet. V-Circ fans are on. We can turn them off actually because we have the air conditioning unit uh, connected. So we don't need those right now. Equipment cooling is on auto. Gas per switch is on. Left and right packs are on auto. Bleed air as everything on auto and APU air is on auto as well. So everything looks good there. Pressurization forward and aft both on auto. Looks good. So the overhead panel flow is complete. We also see that our aircraft is coming to life. While that's happening, let's uh, let's go to our FMC and set everything up. You click on FMC. Huh, nav data is out of date. I think I need to update this to 2407. Uh, but anyway, that's fine for today. Let's go to position initialization. Uh, let's copy the GPS position, put it in here. Uh, going from KSFO and I think we are at B5. Okay, we are at B5, gate B5. B5 there, 
not in database ah you know what i'm going to ignore that right so coming to the route page you go to route request in brief route set payload set fuel the passengers are in our fuel is in we are not going to use gsx for that we will use gsx for pushback though so that will be fun um, but everything else is good and then we go go to select route ah what did i do yeah okay select route so route request is sent and it, it, it is going to do something here there we go so the route uplink is ready now i'm going to press activate and execute all right so going to i believe we need to go to departure page now departure arrival departure ah my bad so we go back to route uh we first go to performance initialization and let's bring our tablet here so that we have the ofp right in front of us Cost index is 82, cruise flight level is going to be 330, it says 370 here, so that's not correct. Let's uh, push in our zero fuel weight real quick. Our zero fuel weight is supposed to be uh, 5 to 4 max, 441.2. Yeah, that's correct so our reserves here are going to be 6.8 i'm going to put that in here it's not 13 that's 6.8 that goes in here right so that is good we press accept there and then we go to the legs page ah we one thing that i forgot to do was uh load the route there it goes route uplink one is loading right there we go route is loaded we press execute and now we can go to the legs page go to route data and then load the wind data for our route it goes execute now we go to departure and arrival let's see what our departure runway is here zero one left so we click zero one left here and then we are going to sierra sierra tango yeah kilo five Go and the C is our transition. It execute. Since it's a short route, I'm gonna fill in the arrival here as well. 24 right is what we are doing. So ILS 24 right, and we are coming in through Airman 2 arrival, and our transition is going to be Burgle. All right, so that looks good. Hit execute good to go now we can go to the vnav page and hit next go to the descent hit forecast and load this is going to request for the wind forecast for us so that it knows when to descend there we go and we hit load and it is good to go all right so legs page we went to route data already go back text performance initialization we have done this and i think we can now go to our takeoff calculation let's go back here performance tool takeoff import from ofp i know we are taking zero one left and this we can import from ofp Import weather ah i can just import it from aircraft actually weather calculate right so that is going to give us everything we need flaps five here and our selected temperature is going to 45C trim of 4.9. So let's see. Okay, so the trim of 4 according to this um, EG. Let's also put in the winds for our runway, which is 0 at 3. Runway is not wet, so we are good there. Based on this, our V1 is 143, the rotate is 147, and 2 is 150. That is good to go. 
I am still not sure why the reference speeds that the FMC calculates for me never matches with these speeds. If you guys know about that, let me know. Uh, but I believe what I missed is putting temperature here. Take off speeds. Let's see if now it matches with, uh, still doesn't doesn't match. So I'm just going to use whatever FMC is calculating because those speeds are anyway higher than what, sorry, um, what the EFB is calculating because those speeds are anyway higher than what the FMC is calculating. Anyway, so that takeoff calculations is complete. Now we can go back to our OFP and uh, open up our departure bid, and we are taking the Take this SS65 RNAV departure. All right, let's get back to our original tablet position. Look through our departure. So basically, we are going to climb max 210 knots until CTEC and then we'll reach Forte, which is at 10,000 feet. Then we'll keep climbing. There's no restriction here. So I guess our initial altitude to be 10,000 feet which is already set. Let's go to the airport information. I am basically looking for taxi routes here. All right, so that's where we are at. Uh, we are taking 01 left. So very short taxi, relatively short taxi. So that's great. Uh, for 01 left, the uh, runway heading is 014. So let's go ahead and set that here. 014. And while we're here, I'm also going to set up my uh, weather. Let's get the weather here real quick again. 2987. 2987, the box, well, not in the box, in the altimeter. That should we'll set our speed to the V2 speed, which is 154 for us today. And we can also enable LNAV and VNAV once we have the flight directors on. This panel is good to go. Our FMC is good to go. All we need to do is just put the parking brakes on now. And let's go through our checklists to make sure we are not missing anything. Oxygen test. That real quick. Not that it matters later. Might as well. Oxygen is tested flight instruments heading and altimeter and everything is that normal before start flight deck doors we are going to do that real quick now going to ground operation uh, let's first start the apu we'll go on the overhead panel push the apu switch to start it should automatically switch back to on that should bring our APU alive. Once we have our APU alive, we won't need the, the ground connection. What I'm waiting for here is uh, an APU running message that will pop up right here. Meanwhile, uh, flight deck doors will check that. MCP is all set. Takeoff speeds all set. CDU pre-flight is complete. Trim, fine. Taxi and takeoff briefings will that it's complete, and we'll turn on the lights. Before taxi, we'll do that once we push back. What I'm going to do meanwhile is we can do a custom pushback today. Let's prepare for pushback. I don't know where my tow truck is. Oh, that's the guy. Okay, so seems like APU is running. So since APU is running, I'm going to turn the research fans on. And then we can release our air conditioning unit and we can also release the ground power and we can remove uh, Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. All right, they are ready for pushback, but we are not. So let's uh, take our time. Uh, all right, so door management, all the doors are closed and locked, all greens here. Let's also go to ground maintenance and make sure all our brakes and tires and everything is good to go. Looks like everything is good to go there as well. Back to our Navigraph. 
here. Right, so tow truck is connecting, I believe, now. Yeah. Level of detail is just beautiful. This is beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick edit pushback here. So let's quickly figure out where we are going to face. Uh, hmm. A little tricky, but since we don't have any traffic here, what I'm planning to do is face right this way. And how do you move this thing? Forgot how you, yeah, oh, there you go. One and three. I think if we push back in this direction, then we can easily turn to the runway. Exiting from editing mode. Release parking brakes, please. All right, so let's get back our camera down there. So that we can get some nice pushback views. Release parking brakes, please. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Doing it. There we go. Release parking brakes, yes, please. sir. Yes. All right, so now we can turn on these fuel pumps. We don't have any fuel in the center tanks, so we don't need that. Uh, Release parking brakes, please. Yes, sir. I am going to do that. There's your parking brakes. Commence in push. All right, let's start engine two. Alright, the second engine, I'm just gonna listen to that one start from the inside. I am sleeping on the FT2 sounds, FT, FT Sim sound pack or something that has come out. I just, I, I need to watch a couple of reviews and then I need to, um, I need to get that, get that one going. Uh, because I've heard that it completely revamps the PMDG sounds. So I'm definitely looking forward to installing that. Because honestly, these engine sounds, uh, Please set parking brakes. All right, set the parking brakes so that these guys don't keep crying about it. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. I mean, not yet. I am working on. Anyway, so yeah, what I was saying is, I am going to download the FT FT Sim um, sound pack or whatever that is, um, and we'll probably do a video on that because. These engine sounds, like what I just listened to from the outside, they were a little bit underwhelming, at least from the lo low side, you know, the base side. Um, it has a lot of whistle to it. Now again, I'm not a, I'm not a real, um, not a real pilot or anything, but 
just from a, just from being a simulator pilot there's this little whistle to it which I don't like. I really like this rumble, the low rumble that should be there in these kind of big uh, engines. But anyway, I could be completely wrong and this is probably how the actual 777 sounds. I just don't know, right? So, can't say much. The GSX was asking me if I had a good engine start. Okay, yeah, I can, I can. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Right, so they are going to disconnect. that's beautiful uh let's get our flaps going let's set the brakes to rto let's uh turn on our taxi lights logo and wing lights can come on as well and then anti-ice we don't need that flight controls check we'll do that real quick uh where's our flight controls there it is all right left aileron well that's why you check flight controls my joystick was locked. Left aileron, right aileron, left rudder, right rudder, elevator full up, elevator full down. Looks good. Go back to checklist here and before that is done, why did it? Side deck doors are closed and locked. No. Okay. So anti ice, don't need it. Recall, I don't know what that is. Auto brakes, RTO, flight controls are checked, ground equipment all clean. Before takeoff, flaps are set, we can move on. After takeoff, landing gear up, flaps up. All right. We'll stay on this one. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's just move to the engine. Not going to matter either way. Okay, we are good to go. So, where do we need to taxi? So we're going to taxi on M3 and then M1, mic 1, and then maybe take this. Uh, this holding point 35 oh uh, mic one holding point uh, right from here and then left okay I'm really bad at directions that way so forgive me parking brakes let's uh, release the parking brakes let's go back to our view let's start taxiing it's crazy how this thing just starts slowly moving even at idle thrust Love it. That's the power of these GE90 engines. By the way, did you guys know that you can fit a full 737 fuselage in the GE90 engine, if I'm not wrong? I've heard that somewhere or I've seen that kind of like a size comparison, but I think you can put a full freaking 737 fuselage in the GE90 engine. That's kind of crazy. Hey, you know what? I can't taxi this slow. I'll go a little bit quicker for you guys. On these kind of videos, I, I, I'm really introvert. Like I, I keep running out of things to talk talk about. I'm gonna taxi at like 25, 30 knots and let you guys watch this. Cabin ready. Notification just came on taking M1 so let's take this turn real quick oh man it is foggy today really foggy it'll be a nice 
IFR flight. Well, actually, SFO is not I. It's it's not IFR. Maybe it's like marginal VFR or something. Close to marginal VFR, I guess. But I'm pretty sure no one would be like at least the private pilots, um, VFR pilots won't be flying in this kind of weather. I wouldn't fly. It's been a while since I've actually flown in real world. It's been close to three months. I do need to work on my um, work on my currency to carry passengers. Uh, the last time I went, I flew. I just flew a full, pretty much like a full mock check ride, and that's that's uh, much what I do every time I fly in real life. I just uh, I just go ahead and fly a full mock check ride so that. Uh, in that one hour, I can pretty much, you know, get every uh, maneuver done, and I can use use that money that I'm paying for the for the aircraft rental in a in a nice way. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna talk more about that real world flying later on, but let's let's get get going with this thing first. Uh, we are at the runway now. Let's uh, turn on the runway turn off lights, probe lights. Everything can come on today. Apart from that, I think we are pretty much ready to go. Did I forget to do this EARA thing? I did not. Okay, so that's good. All right, I think we are good to go. Flaps are five. Um, auto brakes are at RTO. One thing I did forget was to turn off the APU. We can do right now. No biggie. All right, good to go. Feel like I'm forgetting something, so I went. Yes, we'll find out. Let's go. Parking brakes are out. Look at that. Like there's this dense layer of cloud that has formed right on the ground. Crazy. I was in SFO just this weekend actually. I have to say Flight Beam has done a phenomenal job at uh, modeling this airport right. Anyway, sterile cockpit. We'll not talk for a bit. Uh, let you guys listen to the takeoff sounds. Enjoy that for a bit, and then uh, maybe we'll talk about some real world flying or something. Let's see. Or I might just cut it. I don't know. Is it going to let me take off with the APU cooling down? We'll see. It should. That shouldn't be a problem with um, APU cooling down, right? Anyway. There we go. 50% throttle. Let go of the brakes. And toga. There's V1. Rotate, keep pulling, stably. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It's following the flight directors here. Positive rate, gear up. Let's fly this thing a little bit uh, for a little while uh, on manual. I can't talk while I'm flying. All right, flaps to one and flaps up. I think it I think 
time to put it on autopilot and just enjoy some views here because I don't want to miss out on that. That's SFO with a nice thick layer of fog. Look at that, that looks amazing. That looks sick. I feel like I need to change this uh, this camera angle just a little bit to make sure that I can see the horizon. That looks really good. Or maybe it's just the turn that's, yeah, maybe it's just the turn. Okay, what is that? What is that? Is that like a reflection or something? That's getting messed up. That is turning me off. Very weird. Yeah, this thing is everywhere. I don't know what that is. Look at the airport from above. We're gonna be restricted to 10,000, but since we have reached 10,000, we can turn the landing lights off, we can turn the runway turn off lights off, and taxi lights off as well. Logo and wing lights can come off too because we don't need that. Everything else, I think looks fine let's go back to the checklist page and make sure yep after takeoff is good back to descent stay on fuel and let's also turn on weather radar Anyway, so yeah, I was talking about real world flying. So what I was saying is, yeah, I haven't flown for a while now, but whenever I do fly, I just, I just try to do the whole mock check ride. Uh, since it has been at least, I think it has at least been 90 days since I've flown. So I'll have to work on my currency in order to carry passengers. And I'm, I'm definitely going to make sure that I fly with an instructor uh, this time when I go back in the air. That's my personal minimum is is that if, if, if I haven't flown for like, if I haven't flown for, let's say, two months, um, 60 days, that's it. I'm going to get an instructor when I fly next because it's just, it's just not worth the risk. It is uh, definitely not worth the risk to uh, get in the air when you, when you feel like you're not, you know, proficient or you have doubts on your proficiency uh, because you haven't flown for a while and uh, oh and carrying passengers uh, when you're feeling that way is like absolutely not worth it uh, because I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not an airline pilot or I, I don't fly for hire basically so it, it makes no sense for me to risk my life or risk the life of my loved ones to uh, uh, to show that hey you know it's been three months and I can still fly nope even if I can, I'm going to take an instructor up in the air with me, make sure I do all the maneuvers, do all kinds of landings, and then come back down and then take my, uh, take my friends or whoever I want to take, um, take flying. But yeah, that's the update on real world flying. I did want to make the whole goal of, uh, well, obviously I wanted to have my PPL 
uh, for a while now and while I was talking I did forget to get this up to my cruising altitude which is 370 so let's uh, push this down so that we start climbing again 370 right there sorry about that we still have enough room I think we'll reach top of cruise by Sasi and then we'll have a little bit of a cruise and then top of descent anyway so yeah uh, what was I talking about again uh, yeah oh uh, the goals of PPL right so I, I did want to record a lot of uh, real world videos but it's just it's just a hassle man I'm telling you it's it's a lot of hassle you have to um, I, I do have a insta360 which is like a GoPro and I, I can record real-world videos but then you have to figure out how to record the ATC how to f how to isolate those two um, uh, uh, two audio channels and then uh, like I'm not even coming to editing right because that's a whole different uh, completely different ball game uh, when you're looking at these kind of videos but yeah if you're interested in these kind of videos you should definitely check out uh, uh, this channel called aviation 101 um, Josh flowers is his real name amazing guy and you know makes very 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 high quality videos like I would say he has the highest quality videos that I've seen in um, among among all the aviation channels that I've watched very well produced um, he always has you know uh, his, his transitions going on in the videos correctly and everything but yeah definitely worth to check out aviation 101 if you just want to like watch 15 20 minute uh, uh, flying videos real world flying videos uh, when you're having dinner or lunch or something that's pretty much where I'm at in my real world flying I do have my private pilot license I haven't started working on the instrument rating at some point I will I'm just I'm just trying to get some uh, cash loaded in and then I'll probably probably go for the instrument rating later on um, the problem with this thing is I also have to get my TSA clearance and that has expired it's a bunch of things that I have to go through before I can even start the instrument training uh, I do want to get my instrument rating so that I'm just overall a better pilot uh, even though I'm not interested in getting my CPL because I'm never going to be a commercial pilot uh, but I definitely definitely want to get my instrument and I don't know maybe later on I might even I might even add some endorsements uh, to my license if time and finances permit mostly it's just time uh, with a full-time job and everything it's it's really hard to uh, find time in the evenings to fly and sometimes when you have time the weather is not right that's that's what delayed my private pilot license by a very very long time actually for a for a very long time because whenever I was planning my flights the weather would just be terrible um, I was done with my I was done with my uh, uh, what do you call it the, the gate 3 kind of final prep uh, exam that the flight flight school takes in I, I believe last year September August or September I believe uh, and then I was able to take my check ride only in April this year so uh, all of this time was spent just on cancelling flights because of weather and then when you cancel flights for a while you're not proficient again you're uh, bust, busting your maneuvers so then you have to practice more and then it keeps going on and on and on I do have all my private pilot license expenses uh, kind of uh, tracked in uh, in an excel sheet and I was planning to cover that in one of the videos so if you guys are interested in that kind of video I am definitely going to do that I think that was the second uh, second most requested video when I did the poll well not requested but second most selected video when I did the poll uh, so that's that's amazing I, I I was hoping that people would like to see that you know sometimes what happens is I really like making some kind of content but then people don't like watching that kind of content and when uh, and when that matches up 
the content that I like making versus what people like watching, that's when I have fun. I, I'll definitely, I'll definitely upload that video in probably this week itself. Uh, just we'll be going over the breakdown of all the expenses that I've incurred during my uh, uh, private pilot license journey, right from the start, buying the iPad, getting four flight. I've even accounted for the fuel that uh, uh, that I put into my car to drive to the airport um, for all of my flight lessons. So it's a very, very detailed breakdown of all the expenses. And I'm I'm a hundred percent sure that if you guys are, uh, are going to you know uh, aiming for aiming to get the private pilot license, I think that sheet will be really helpful to you guys. Uh, if you want to manage your finances while you're doing it, I think that will be helpful as well because you can pretty much just plug in the values in there and you'll be able to calculate, okay, how much in total have I spent on, um, on this hobby or on this career choice or whatever uh, you call it, right? So yeah, look, please uh, look out for that video. I'm definitely uploading it. Uh, All right, so if we look at our prog page, uh, we are roughly 22 miles from our descent point top of descent so let's start uh, let's start looking at our uh, approach and stuff real quick here so we are going to do the ILS 24 right approach 8900 feet of runway if you go to rad nav right here it should have already loaded the ILS frequency which is 108.5 so I'm gonna go uh, actually I'm gonna bring the bring the tablet right here so that we have it in hand 24 right is this one so we're gonna do ILS localizer runway 24 right there we go what is uh, I'll check the I'll check the altitudes and stuff real quick here uh, what is the minimum is what I'm looking for it's gonna be 200 yeah it's gonna be 200 uh, feet AGL not uh, let's reset our MCP altitude real quick so that the FMC doesn't cry about it and I think 10,000 well let's, let's just verify what our altitudes need to be 2200 is where we are going to intercept so I guess our altitude can be roughly set to 1000 because that's when we'll probably be disconnecting the autopilot until then we can just keep going on VNAV um, anyway so I'm gonna change okay let's verify the ILS frequency here 108.5 251 is good I think it's good there uh, what is our waypoint right before the vector so it's Mercy uh, Mercy and then Kobe okay so at Mercy I need to be at 4000 feet uh, and then at Kobe, I'll have to be at 2200. So definitely I'm going to intercept the localizer at Mercy is what I think is going to happen. Anyway, so that looks good. Let's go back to our plan page here and make sure that we have a nice continuity in the route. So Mercy is here. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going. And then I'm going to switch to heading mode because I've made this mistake before. If I if I link these two together, I'm going to be in trouble um, because it's going to be too tight of a turn, and then I won't be able to hit the glide slope and whatnot. So I'm going to keep vectoring, uh, uh, keep uh, going out, and then uh, and then switch to heading mode, and then go direct. Well, I'll keep going on this vector, and then I'll switch uh, switch to uh, nav mode and just say direct to mercy and that should that should work I think it says drag required but I don't think drag required what do you need drag for oh that, that's why speed is going up some drag so, anyway so that's what we are gonna do we are gonna take we we'll hit this waypoint keep going straight and then when we are somewhere here maybe like three miles or so out we'll uh, we'll go direct mercy so that we come in at a 45 degree angle and uh, with everything set up uh, and good to go anyway so that looks good I don't see any problems in our uh, approach routing
going back to 80 mile what I can do is put a nice fix here LAX and then I'm gonna do a 10 mile fix on that and also a 25 mile fix on that basically just so that I know where I'm at with respect to the airport uh, with respect to where the centers are at alright so that is good to go uh, I'll still keep this uh, approach plate on on the tablet yeah don't need speed brakes anymore I guess go slow down way too much but that's fine we are descending that's the fun part of the real world flying is the descent calculation like when do you when do you start descending so that you are exactly at the pattern altitude um, when you're roughly like maybe two miles out or something you want to make sure that you are at your pattern altitude um, just far enough so that you can see all the traffic that's in the pattern I mean obviously if you have ADS be in and out um, well specifically in you're going to see all the traffic on your um, on your display if you have that display on the uh, on the 172 or whatever you're flying but the uh, uh, but uh, we, we still need to make sure that we are maintaining visual because if some aircraft doesn't have ADS-B out you're not going to see that thing on your display so it's all see and avoid right so uh, I, I that's how my instructor taught me is like hey if you're at least a couple of miles out you need to be uh, at your pattern altitude and then once you're at your pattern altitude all the aircrafts will be in your like straight line of sight you won't have to uh, uh, you won't have to scan around for any of them up or down right you just you're just looking at this one uh, straight line of sight area so that's how I that's how I manage it like roughly when I when I'm doing a cross country let's say uh, a 50 mile cross country I'll, I'll be probably cruising at depending on which direction it is it'll probably be at like either seven or somewhere in uh, six to nine thousand range uh, there's one time where I've gone up to like ten thousand five hundred uh, but that's just once yeah usually I keep it to like six to nine thousand somewhere in that range obviously plus five hundred because when you're a VF, VFR pilot you need to you need to add five hundred to all of your cruising altitudes depending on whether you are flying um, east or whether you're flying west but yeah that's pretty much um, so what I what I do is I f fly at that altitude and then um, uh, I assume a descent rate of like th let's say thousand feet per minute and depending on what I'm uh, what speed I'm flying at I'll I have this little EFB uh, descent calculator where I put in the speed that I'm flying at and the descent rate that I want to uh, um, uh, want to follow and all of that jazz and then it, it'll give me that okay you need to start descending uh, x miles before the airport and that's pretty much what i follow it's it's best to take out as much manual effort from your flying as possible obviously you need to make sure that it makes sense right if it says that you need to descend from 9000 feet like five miles out that doesn't make any sense right you won't be at your uh, you won't be at your target altitude if oh, it's asking for drag again and give it some more drag here but yeah that, that's what I was saying is oh and one thing we forgot is to do the descent checklist now guys this is not guys this is not how I fly in real world okay I'm forgetting the checklist because I'm in the flight simulator this is not how I fly in the real world in case you guys are getting all worked up because I haven't um, I haven't done this flight by the books recall is fine notes is fine auto brakes we're going to use maybe that eh, should be a long runway two is fine landing data let's go to approach our landing speed is going to be 137 knots with flaps 30 
uh, landing data is fine up uh, minimums we haven't set the minimums yet so let's do that real quick I'm gonna s uh, uh, radio radio minimums is what we need okay and it's gonna be 200 so that is set uh, approach briefing so before we do that let's also check the weather again for our arrival airport it's one to zero at five so we are run uh, we're landing on 20 okay yeah so that's and we have five nautical miles visibility broken at thousand broken at eleven thousand and then two niner niner two is our altimeter so i'm going to set that altimeter right now uh, just so that we can swap directly to that when uh, when we hit 18,000 feet and we are close so it will be good anyway approach briefing is complete you guys know where we are landing and you guys know what star we are taking so that is good approach altimeters are set as well uh, before landing we will uh, arm the speed brakes landing gear should be down and flaps will be set to 30 so these will automatically clear out as we uh, finish the landing checklist but yeah everything looks great we are very close to our destination look at that view guys i'm gonna change views so that people don't just quit out of my video that's one thing i've realized is it's it's so hard it's so hard to build an audience in um in flight simming and I know I'm not I'm not like that interesting or anything like uh, this, this Swiss guy that I was watching the other day. Really funny. He's also a real world pilot. But yeah, it's, initially I I was like, what what is this guy doing? But then as I started watching more of his videos, I feel like he's way smarter than what he shows uh, on his channel. He's a really smart guy. Close to eighteen thousand feet now looks like there is some weather so i'm hoping that we'll get to see what this weather radar can do because whenever i have flown this triple seven there has never been um there's never been any weather to look at is that drag required again bit some anyway eighteen thousand feet we switch to standard well we switch out of standard to the local which seems like it is standard um Auto brakes are set to 2. As we get to 10,000 feet, that's when we'll turn on the landing lights and everything. So we are good right now. I did turn on the storm lights because it was getting pretty dark. Look at that. Kind of dark in here. Maybe it's because of my uh, because of my monitor setting or something. I think that's what it is. I've turned the black tuner quite a bit low on my on my monitor setting. So even though you guys can probably see everything just fine, um, I see things really dark. Probably need to fix that. Anyway, so like I was saying, maybe I next video maybe I'll I'll download the FT Sim sound and uh, we can check that sound pack out together. Maybe I'll just make a no uh, no commentary, just sounds video of like taxi sounds and startup sounds and cruise sounds from the cabin cruise sounds from the cockpit cruise sounds from outside all of that you know combined combined into like one cinematic kind of video and that's I'll, I'll just throw that thing out so that i'm not talking over the sounds that you guys want to listen uh, listen to all right so we are hitting the 20 f are we no get a little f further away from that Look at those clouds. Quite dense. Seems like they're right above the airport. So that'll be a fun. Uh, like I should turn on the terrain. Can you only turn on either of those, or can you turn on both of them? I don't know. We have to do anything here. Weather plus terrain. Okay, that should work. So that's terrain that's weather plus terrain okay i guess i guess i did it right but i don't know that's wx plus t so i think it should be weather plus terrain 
I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are probably thinking that this guy is the worst pilot in the world. That's just how I fly in, not how I fly in real world. In real world, I'm going by the checklist, not taking any chances. All right, I guess we are at 13,000 feet. I'm going to just turn the landing lights and all this on. Just in case I forget later on because that's not in the Um Tom lights, we'll need the taxi lights. Eh, we don't need taxi lights right now. That's fine. Uh, okay. We are on our way. Let's look at some wing views. I want to do more of these uh, oceanic flights too, but I need to watch. I need to watch some tutorials. I, I I am very rusty on the whole oceanic thing. I remember flying these uh, events on Vatsim when I was in my undergrad, but it's been years since I've flown oceanic route. So I need to do a tutorial again. I watch a tutorial again and and then uh, do one of those flights. That'll be a nice flight. Like the other day, I was watching. Um, I believe his channel's name is A330 Driver and he did a flight from uh, I believe Singapore to uh, Gatwick or something like that yeah he's a very uh, very entertaining guy I was just clearing out my headphones anyway yeah he's a very entertaining guy I saw the bug that he faced with uh, GSX in that stream or on that video that was funny never seen that before by the way but yeah if you guys don't know which channel I'm talking about he is uh, it's called the channel name is a330 driver he is actually an airline pilot um, I don't think he's a triple seven pilot I think he uh, flies the a320 if I'm not wrong but yeah don't quote me on that anyway he is an airline pilot and makes really fun really well fun is the wrong word he makes very educational uh, videos he has also uploaded another video today i believe today or yesterday uh, he has uploaded a video about the f about the details of the fly by wire system on the 777 so if you guys are interested in that definitely definitely check his uh, check his video out because he has a lot of knowledge about aircraft systems especially airliners right well if he knows about airliners you definitely know about the smaller airplanes but uh, you know what i mean he has a lot of knowledge about the uh, aircraft systems so definitely if you are into that kind of stuff you know check out his channel um, shout out to him nobody gives me shout outs like that Look at that view. That looks so good. That looks absolutely amazing. Oh, ho, ho, ho. No, not that side. Oh, I'm again in that confusion whether to do an auto land or not. I don't want to. But I feel like I'm going to mess up the landing so bad. And then this video is going to look like crap yeah when I look at clouds on um, on the flight sim and in real world um, well the, the clouds that you can actually fly through not the dangerous ones but uh, I, I really get tempted to start my instrument training maybe I should go for the high uh, high performance endorsement first which will allow me to fly uh, anything that's beyond 200 horsepower uh, for airplane single engine land maybe I should do that first because that's a quick one right uh, I can probably also get complex with that and then complex is basically you have flaps uh, a retractable landing gear and you also have a constant uh, constant speed prop that's that's called a complex airplane uh, but maybe I'll do complex, I'll do uh, high performance and then I should do the tailwheel. 
I don't know where I would do tailwheel because I don't think my flight school has any tailwheel airplanes. Anyway, I mean, I'm not that interested in tailwheels, but at least the high performance and complex ones, I'm definitely interested in those two. And it'll be nice to have, uh, it'll be nice to have those two at least. Okay, what's the FMC saying? Drag required. Can I not just start putting down flaps by now? I think I can. I put down flaps one. Actually, no. It's too early. I'm gonna just slow down that early, and then it'll be yes. But yeah, we are almost at our last waypoint, so we are going to hold. Let's see what altitude we are going to hold. We're going to be at six thousand feet, and then Mercy is four thousand or above. Okay. So I'm gonna plan it in a way that uh, I'm gonna plan it in a way that I can hit 4,000 feet. So I need to be further enough from Mercy to be able to hit to be able to hit 4,000 feet there. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, ideally, if there was ATC online, right? I would have. Oh, you know what? This should actually have been at 6,000. I can put it to 5,000. That's fine too. Anyway, so ideally, if there was ATC at this point, I would have switched to heading mode and uh, and FLCH mode, and I'd be controlling my altitude and everything according to what they tell me, right? But since there's no ATC right now, I'm just doing my own thing, and I want to really, really accurately hit this approach because last time I messed up that we can already see the ground so not not that bad on visibility really kind of crazy that i was here just this weekend sfo and uh, la a lot of fun all right so we are at 5000 feet it's going to stabilize us at 5000 feet and then I am thinking that we can hit, let me put a fix at 10 mile, oh we have one at 10 mile, we have one at, oh, let's put one at 20 mile, 20, so I guess as soon as I hit this 20 mile line, I'm going to then start turning into, uh, turning into this waypoint, mercy, that's what we are going to do. Man, I cannot believe that I'm getting this kind of frame rates with uh, 200 terrain level of detail. That's just crazy. That's crazy. I've never had this kind of performance. I mean, I do have a really good PC, but I I never thought that you can get this kind of performance in a PMDG aircraft. If you were to talk to me like five years back, when 30 to 60 FPS was like a big deal. And here we are now with like frame generation and lossless scaling and whatnot. It's all serving us perfectly. Look at that detail. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let's go back in there. Start. Okay, we're about to hit our line here. So I'm going to go back to the legs page and uh, I'm going to go change my MCP altitude to uh, 1000 and I'm going to go direct to Mercy and I'll also enable localizer here. So that will put us in a nice turn towards Mercy and let's also start descending. Let's put flaps one. It's not going to be the most perfect approach, I feel, but it'll be. Look at that view, guys. Come on. How can I miss the wing view here? There we go. Perfect. Look at that shadow. 
Look at that shadow. That's our shadow. That looks amazing. These days when I fly this sim, I just cannot comprehend where we have come in terms of flight simming. In terms of visuals, in terms of systems depth, just unbelievable. You would have looked at it like 10 years back and someone would have shown this to you. Crazy. Anyway, we are below the, below the glide slope so I feel better about that at least. Uh, flaps 1, let's go flaps 5. And then at 5 I'm gonna just hold it until we uh, start. So localizer is already captured so I can hit approach so that we can uh, also capture the glide path once we oh, I made a mistake here I should have just kept it at like 4000 because if I keep it at 4000 what it's gonna do is stabilize at 4000 and then it will just hit the glide slope and uh, capture the glide slope but if I don't do that it's gonna just keep following the VNAV path which is which will always be a little offset from the glide slope. So that's why I'm just enabling the glide slope so that we, uh, well, uh, pushing it to 4000 so that we, we can capture the glide slope. You see how the glide slope pink uh, thing is coming, coming down. So that means we are getting closer and closer uh, to capturing it. Awesome. All right. The speed part is what I don't understand here. Should we be manually controlling speed or like what's the what's the deal there? Yeah, I think we should just we should manually control the speed to uh, 170 now because that's what our restriction is for uh, for Kobe. That's where I made the mistake last time where, where I just kept going on this. Uh, nav uh, speed mode while I should have actually switched to uh, the FLCH mode and controlled my speed according to what the restriction yeah that's what we're gonna do we're idling slowing down so that's great we're about 10 miles from the airport now that's why it's good to have these fixes so that it exactly tells you how far you are from the airport Let me give it some drag so that we can slow down quicker and then we'll just arm the speed brakes. That should be enough. Let's just arm the speed brakes. Because when we put the landing gear down, I think that's also when we'll uh, see some drag come in and that'll, that'll slow us down quite a bit as well. Alright, so time to put the landing gear down. There we go. Gonna slow down even further. Lap 15 speed as we keep getting closer. 2500. Right. Let's go flaps 20. Down maybe to 150. I'm trying to prep a little early because that's one mistake I've made on this airplane is is prepping really late and then getting into a situation look at that guys look at that i love that view love that view absolute thing. right 150 uh we can go flaps 25 go to the 25 speed i believe our b ref is uh 137 from what I remember yep it's well updated so let's make it 136 uh, and then the 136 so we need to be at 140 roughly okay, let's get fully prepped here early enough we are at roughly maybe like 5 miles or something the airport 
Yeah, 4.4 miles. Alright, landing checklist. Speed brakes, good. Landing gear, good. Flaps, good. Looks amazing. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at those reflections on the wing. That's some sick texture work. That is some really, really good texture work. Holy. What a scenic approach, guys. This flight was a lot of fun. What a nice short flight. That's one reason why I bought the 777 um, really late. Because I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna fly um, long routes or not. Uh, that's the runway. So I believe we can get rid of the autopilot. And we're gonna just land this thing manually. Oh man, I suck so bad. Continue. Too low, I guess. That was a long landing. Let's see if the reverses come on now. They didn't. So I guess I need to figure out what's going on with my what's going on with my reversers. Because this is the third time my reversers haven't come on. That's really annoying. That's fine. We have slowed down enough. We're at the end of the runway. That should be good enough. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think you guys want to watch me shut this thing down. And I have no clue how to end this video. So yeah, just like, subscribe, share the video. And I'll see you on the next one.